Hello guys, Arna Soda Films, aka Mal here with a video that I teased in the video on the cancelled episode of Season 3, which is a map of the island of Sodor, as per my own series Tales from Sodor's Railways. This video will also be kinda like the Unlucky Tug Sodor map videos, although I got the idea from JamesFan1991's map of Sodor from his NRWS series. At first, when I started the series, I was mostly following the Sam Wilkinson map, but I had Tidmouth and Natford switched around and Elfbridge being on the main line, alongside the removal of the diesel works and the Misty Island Tunnel as they don't exist in my canon, when I later decided on having it more closer to the Railway series map. And I decided that my map should have some placement of locations be like how they were on the Unlucky Tugs model series of CGI maps. Even though I didn't really agree with him when he said that both the model series and the CGI series were separate canons. And also not all television series locations will be featured because I didn't want it to be way too crowded like the Sam Wilkinson map. I also felt a similar thing with a handful of OCs that I created around 2017 and 2019 which are planned to appear in Enwin series like with Wesley. And in case you haven't watched Neville's Race, the mainline loop from the Sam Wilkinson map was mentioned in that episode but in 2022 I came up with the Shining Time branch line. More on that later which replaces it on the map. A few things from the Sam map are present such as the fishing village being on Arthur's branch line. Although some things from David Mitten's map will also be present like with the loop line from Timoth to Wellsworth although it's from Natford to Wellsworth in this case. So, with all that out of the way, let's start with the main line. As per the railway series, Tidmouth is the terminus of the North Western Railway. At first, I did have it as Natford, which lined up with most of the train's photos that I made when I originally used 06 routes. But when I started using the iOS hybrid route, I ended up changing Tidmouth to be the terminus. The harbour and roundhouse are also located here. Next, we go through Tidmouth Tunnel, despite not being marked on the map, and we arrive at Lower Tidmouth, the second station on the main line for local trains. Next, it then travels past Natford Shunting Yards before arriving into Natford Station where Thomas's branch line also starts. Another roundhouse is also here as well. There is also a junction for the loop line which travels northwards under a bridge and travels into Ellsbridge which is also the junction station for Thomas's branch line. At Ellsbridge, there is also two sheds here that are used for storing rolling stock. Also, given how at first I was going to have Natford and Tidma switched around in my, as soon as my Thomas and Missing Christmas Tree remake, you can see why I was going to have Ellsbridge be on the main line, although I have added the loop, which, which I based on the one I see on the David Mitten map instead of the Sam Wilkinson map obviously, before reconnecting with the main line and into Wellsworth. I also decided to place the Fenland from here and the rails on here. Now, returning to the main line, after we leave Natford, we pass the hold for the dairy, then get to what is meant to be the bridge from busy going backwards and the signing in which is where not only Toad fell into, but also where Bruno was also diverted into when he broke away from Percy as seen in Percy's new breakdown. We then travel along past the trackside cottage, through Crosby Tunnel, past the field where James crashed into, before arriving at Crosby. At Crosby, there's also another junction to the Crosby coaling plant where Logan works, as well as the barbershop that Duck crashed into. After that, it crosses over the Crosby Bridge, past the engine wash, and into Henry's Forest. The Soda Logging Company is also located here. It is also where Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand work in the series, as Misty Island is a lot different compared to the TV series, given how the tunnel to Misty Island doesn't exist. Lexi and Theo also work here. After another piece of track, we get to the Sodor Suspension Bridge, which is placed like how it was on the Sam Wilkinson map. 
after that, the track passes by a road which crosses over a bridge before arriving into Wellsworth, where Edward's branch line also starts here. At first, I did have it based on how it was in the model series, but as seen in Percy's new break fan, it was given a new look to look more closer to its CGI appearance. After Wellsworth Station, we have a small siding, which is where Philip parked with trucks when he was trying to help him. We then pass through Sudbury Junction for Edwards Branch Line, then over Gordon's Hill, which has changed a lot over the past four years in the series, but the new one as seen in Flying Scotsman Centenary is the current one, which is a blend between Trackmaster and Tommy Blue Track, which I have no problems with. At the bottom of Gordon's Hill is the junction to Alstead Castle, and then goes over the bridge over Tunnel Runby from Philip to the rescue, which also takes the place of the double track bridge Runby on the Unlucky Tugs map, which is based on its appearance in Season 1 of the television series. After Marin is the junction for the Shining Time branch line, which like what I said earlier is the replacement for the mainline loop line from the Sam Wilkinson map. After Marin, we have the Viaduct, which crosses over the Harwen Ave before arriving at Kronk, which hasn't really been seen in my series for the most part, although if you have seen my remake of Super Rescue, then you may know that Vickerstown took the place of Kronk in it, and the same with Proven's Gate and Overhaul. After that, we reach Kildane, which has been seen in the series, although the bridge was only seen in the Gordon's Fire Service remake. Here is also the junction for the Peel Godric branch line alongside the ballast plant, a motor rail terminal, and the Sodor Construction Company's yard. Afterwards, there's a long stretch of track. We then go over the Balladrin Bridge, over the junction to the Kurt Ronan branch line before arriving into Kelsworth Road. After Kelsworth Road is the airport, which is also placed like it was on the Unlucky Tugs model series map. I also like to point out that while the airport is canon in the series, the events of Calling All Engines are non-canon. After that we have Proven's Gate, which is the interchange for the Star Lowy Railway, the works where Victor, Kevin and Jeff work are also located here. Den and Dart also work here as maintenance diesels. A junction for the Great Waterton branch line is also located after the station. Next, we get to something which I forgot to include when I first made the map. The bypass line to Balahu and the Normandy branch line, alongside the Balahu bridge which has only been seen in my Deep Freeze remake, before approaching Henry's Tunnel and then heading towards Town. Before the station we have the Iron Bridge which crosses over the Great Waterton branch line. Also, compared to the TV series, the Natford Iron Bridge is located near Vickerstown instead of Natford. Now we get to Vickerstown, the last stop on Sodor for the main line, which was also the original terminus for the Northwestern Railway. A goods yard is also located here, along with the sheds, as well as a railway museum. Like in NTR1991 series, Jim and Alice are owned by the railway museum, along with Alaric, Eric, Victor, and Flying Fistol. Right after Vickerstown we have the rolling bridge that connects Sodor to the mainland and finally we reach the final stop for the main line, Barrow in Finesse. The Northwestern Railway also has a shed here. Alright, so now that we've covered the main line, it's time that we cover the branch line, starting with the Little Western. Duck's branch line starts at Tidmouth. It then goes past the roundhouse, around the bend. After that is Conrad's Bridge, past Tidmouth Beach where Bulstrode resides, through Tidmouth Tunnel before arriving at Tidmouth Holt. An engine shed and yard is also located here. Then it goes over Bulgy's Bridge and then hugs the coast before reaching Holtra. We then keep heading forward over a hill and into Bluffs Cove where some tracks leading to the Callan Castle branch line are. We then arrive at the next station on the branch line after passing a bend, that being Arlesborough West, the interchange for the Arsdale Miniature Railway. As per the CGI series, the Arsdale Railway follows the Little Western before branching off east, and we arrive at the final stop before the Harwick extension, Arlesborough Harbour. Like in the CGI series, Harwick was reached by rail in 1995, 
which does mean that the events of Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure happened in the Tales of Sodor's Rose canon. North of the harbour is Ryan and Daisy's good shed, where Ryan resides alongside Daisy after being transferred from Thomas's branch line to the Harwick extension. And even though it hasn't appeared in the series, I also included Callie's cavern here, as well as afterwards, we go over the bridge where James fell into the water and arriving at Harwick. Well, that's the little Western Harwick extension covered. Thomas's branch line in the series is mostly based on how it was in the Railway series and the CGI series, although I have been thinking on if I should update it to look more closer to Audrey's map and include a loop to Ellsbridge. Thomas's branch line starts at Natford, past the bus shed, and then goes onto the branch line itself. It then goes past a windmill, which is the one from the Season 8 to 18 intro, which was also why the intro for Season 4 was based on it. After passing it, we pull into Trial. An airfield is located here alongside a football field. After the station is a hill where Daisy once leaked oil on the rails, causing Thomas to slip onto the runaway sign and derailing Annie. After the hill is Troy Wreck and the junction between the passenger and goods line. If we take the goods line, it will take you through Crow's Farm Crossing, past the junction for the lead mine where Thomas fell down the mine. Since it hasn't appeared in my series, I'm using the diorama that I did for the Just Like Audrey challenge. Also, when I do make a video on the Audrey Extravaganza 4, I will talk about how I made it. And along the hay farm, it then passes Dryor Airfield before arriving into Natford Harbour where Julian, Ted and Deliacy work here. Continuing with the passenger line, it goes under the road bridge, along the lowlands where Percy braves bad weather to help Thomas, past the Ellsbridge cricket field before arriving into Ellsbridge station itself, where the loop line meets up with Thomas's branch line. St. Pedrick's Dairy is also here. The line then crosses over the River Els alongside a road bridge and a nearby water mill, passing the cutting where Daisy met Champion the Bull before arriving into Maithwaite. There is also an old mine northwest of Maithwaite. After Maithwaite, we get to the hill, which is the same one where 81 had his fall and was scrapped and where Percy had his close call on a wet and rainy day. At the bottom of the hill is the signal box where Thomas's crew threw the fireman's lunchbox with a note inside to the signalman, where after that it comes side by side with the road and the river Callan, alongside Farmer McCall's farm, where it occurs and arrives at Hackenbeck Tunnel, where Mrs. Kindly's cottage is also located. The line soon reaches Hackenbeck, before passing Terence's field and arriving at Fafqua. Now before we go down the quarry tramway, let's have a look at the Olsted extension, where it continues on from Fafqua, around a curve, near a school, which is the same one where the horror lorries played a trick on Thomas by pouring cement onto the tracks, past a waterfall, the bridge that Toby nearly got swept away in, over the dam, past the junction to the Olsted coal mines before arriving into Olsted. If we take the track to the coal mines, it goes through Miner's Halt, across another hill before arriving at the coal mines where Sonny works. Back to Farfclaw, behind the station, the track cuts off and goes through the quarry tramway which curves through the village and then reaches a steep gradient going up to the quarry. It then goes through a narrow gorge, past the runaway siding where Callan Pond is also located, over the river bridge before reaching the crossing where Thomas got into trouble with an angry policeman, and it finally reaches the Farfclaw quarry. Mavis works here along with Tasha after she was restored. We have now reached the end of Thomas's branch line. Next, we will be looking at Edward's branch line. The branch line starts at Wellsworth, where Wellsworth sheds and the yard is located. Also, just to let you know, a shed for Edward is not canon and Edward has slept there since it opened. Once you go onto Sunnery Junction, we're officially onto the branch line, where it passes the Vicarage Orchard where Trevor lives and Cronk's scrapyard. Reg also resides here. Near the scrapyard is the waste dump, which is located on Edward's branch line, like on the Unlucky Tug CGI Sodor map. The same could be said for Boxford Halt, as it is located here as well. It passes both the flour mill, Sunnery Castle, 
and Lower Suddery and arriving into Suddery Station, here is another junction that leads to the Sodor Firecrew Base, which is technically the Sodor Search and Rescue Centre in my series, although the Misty Island Tunnel, like as I said before, doesn't exist, mostly as I have my version of Misty Island to be a lot different compared to the TV series given how the events of Misty Island Rescue never happened in this canon. And I figured that I should have ferry trips running from here to Misty Island instead of the Misty Island Tunnel. After that we have the Animal Park where Nia works, it then passes the girls' school and reaches Brendan Docks. The second biggest harbour on Sodor next to Tidmouth. Salty, Porter, Puffer and Little Owl also work here. And for those who haven't watched the series before, you may have also guessed that Tugs is indeed canon to the series. Cranky and Big Mickey are also here alongside Carly. The line then goes over the drain before finally ending at the Sodor China Clay Works. Bill, Ben, Derek, Fergus, Marilyn and Timothy all work here. Our next branch line is the track to Olsted Castle. The line is also heavily based on how it was depicted on the Unlucky Tug CGI Sodor map. The line starts at the bottom of Gordon's Hill, goes over a curve, over a two-row hill, past the junction to Hero's Hideout, which does mean that Hero of the Rails is canon, although one big change is that Hero came to Soda during World War II, but due to Japan going into war with Britain, replacement parts for Hero couldn't be ordered, so he was left in the signing until he was rediscovered by Thomas. After Hero was restored, Boulder Quarry was constructed, but after Thumper accidentally set the boulder loose and destroyed the shed, the quarry was shut down and the track to it was ripped up. After crossing a narrow bridge, we get to the hill to Olsted Castle. Next to it is the abandoned coal mine, and we now finally made it to Olsted Castle, home to Sir Robert Normby's estate railway. Olsted Castle is also accessed by Thomas's branch line. The next line we have is the Shining Time branch line. I already talked about this in the Mouse Trains episode of Rainbow Sun, so check that out if you haven't. And it was also planned to appear in my mini-series based on Thomas and the Magic Road without the magic elements, although I haven't gotten that far, but I was hoping to get it done in time for the 40th anniversary of the Thomas television series. The Shining Time station starts at Marin. It then switches off the main line, passes a bridge and a water tower before arriving at the first station on the line, Sportsfield Halt before continuing on a straight track before arriving at Killer Barn. I placed some Thomas and the Magic Railroad locations on here, but I didn't feature every single one like Diesel Tent Mountain, since they aren't featured in my canon. Afterwards, it goes around the corner, over the Big Dipper Viaduct, before arriving into the third station, Kellaby, which is depicted as this station from James the Red Engine. It then goes along another stretch, before arriving at Shining Time Station itself. Its yard and Burnett's workshop are also located here. Alongside is a loop that was built in 2013 and Neville, Ari and Bert were given the chance to test it. While Neville did it smoothly, Ari and Bert didn't and fell into a ditch. So that's the Shining Time branch line over with. Now we get to the Peel Godred branch line. Like in the Railway series, the Peel Godred branch line is electrified. It begins at Kildane and then branches off into the north of the mountains before pulling into Abbey, along through Shen Valley before going past Harwin Lake, which in my canon was closed in 1934 along with the Kurt Ronan branch line during the Great Depression. But the both were later reopened in 1974 during the events of Season 5, alongside is the Harwin Lake Viaduct. North of that is the junction for the Blue Mountain Quarry where Paxton is owned by. The line goes under the narrow gauge bridge before reaching Kirk Macharan, the interchange for the Culdy Fell Railway. It then travels under a bridge before arriving at Peel Godred. There is also tracks leading to the Soda Ironworks where Ari, Bert, Diesel Tent, CB, Frankie and Hurricane work. After the station is the Sodor Aluminium Works, where Stuart and Falcon were bought after the mid Sodor Railway closed down before being bought by the Scar Lowy Railway. Freddy, Atlas and Alfred also worked here after they were sold to it, but they were both soon bought by the Scar Lowy Railway and the Blue Mountain Quarry. 
Like what the unlucky tug did on his model series Sodor map, I also included a good slide to the cement works where Fergus did use to work until he was replaced by a diesel engine called Finn, but was thankfully sold to the Fat Controller and was put to work at the Sodor China Clay Works. The next line we are going to be having a look at is the Kurt Ronan branch line. The branch line's history is pretty much the same as the railway series. It was part of the Sodor and Mainland Railway until it closed in 1901 and later became the Kurt Ronan branch line during the creation of the Northwestern Railway. Although like in Wild the Western series, it was closed during the Great Depression but was later reopened and restored during the events of Season 5. A new station for Kurt Ronan was built to replace the original. The line starts at Kelthorpe Road, crosses over the Harwin Crooker, before going down a hill where Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory is at the bottom, and arriving at Rolf's Castle. Like what the unlucky tug did, take a drink every time I say that. I used Tidmouth Bay to represent it before descending into the new Kurt Ronan station. The original was ripped up as it was no longer needed due to the new one replacing it. The docks, however, are still in use. Also, like in sort of the early slash modern years, Eric is in charge of the branch line, although like in NWR 1991, he was bought for the Harwick extension when it was proposed again during World War II, before eventually being reached by rail in 95. Before we get to the Normby branch line, also known as Arthur's branch line, we are going to have a look at the Great Waterton branch line, aka the original section of Sodor Tramways. This is based on Stepney's branch line on the Sam Wilkinson map, but since Stepney is a visitor and lives on the Bluebell Railway like in the Railway Series canon, I gave it to Stanley. The branch starts at Crovens Gate with the canopy station from the TV series. Then it goes onto the west side of the junction. The east junction was added for the 5th anniversary special. Goes over a hill before pulling into Great Waterton Station. The engine shed for Neville, Billy, Stanley and Flora are located here alongside Morgan's Mine. It then travels up to Bluebell Valley, near the Scarlowy Railway. A station is also located here. It then goes along the Bluebell Valley Tunnel, after that it splits up to the Rolling River Bridge Junction. The bridge itself collapsed in 1955 and was originally connected to the mine as seen in the untold story of the Red Black Engine. I also decided to have it and the abandoned quarry from Wild War to Rescue be the same location, mostly given how I was mostly taking railway series classic locations from the Hit era and CGI locations into consideration for this map. The bridge was eventually rebuilt when the mine was reopened as a tourist attraction. It then travels over the Rolling River Bridge and over a curve, passing the Sodor racetrack before calling in at the countryside station from Don't Tell Thomas, although I did have a rewrite of it planned with Donald and Douglas in Thomas's place. Mostly because when I rewatched the episode a couple of years ago, I was thinking about what it would have been like if Donald and Douglas had Thomas' role. It then crosses over a piece of straight track before crossing the Iron Bridge and arriving into Vickers Town. Since it also used to be the old route for Sodor Tramways, let's move on to the Callan Castle branch line, aka the Ulsted section of Sodor Tramways. The story here is pretty much like in Random Melon's old canon where Toby's old line in the TV series was the Ulsted section of Sodor Tramways due to Toby's old line being in East Anglia as per the railway series. So to put it short, when Great Watson was abandoned, instead of closing, Sodor Tramways moved to Ulsted, but was also later closed as well as the only standard gauge railway on Sodor that didn't join in with the creation of the Northwestern Railway. Although, after the original Sodor Tramway route was reopened in 1955, Oliver later rediscovered this part during the events of Season 5, where it was later connected to Thomas's branch line. Jesse, Caddy and Dan Wirt all run this part of the line. 
the line begins at Bluffs Cove, before heading east and arriving at Upper Arlesborough. I figured I should use the village station from It's Only Snow for the station. It then passes Toby's Windmill and crosses the rickety old bridge, which just to let you know, the walking bridge from season 24 doesn't exist, past the iconic windmill from the classic intro, before pulling into Lower Arlesborough. The line soon reaches Misty Valley and arrives into Callan Castle. After that, there is some point to Bertram's old mine, which used to be the Arsdale Mines at the mid Railway, but now it has since been adapted as a part of the Marfway Light Railway. After that, the line descends through Blacklock before reaching Callan Station. I also decided to have Callan Castle and the castle from Toby's Discovery be the same location. After that, the line arrives at Arsdale End, which was connected to Thomas's branch line and became a through station. Behind it is the track to Alstead Castle. With both routes of Soto Tramways out of the way, we are now going to cover the Normby branch line. The Normby branch line starts at Vickerstown while the Express and the Limited used the bypass from Proven's Gate. It was originally operated by the LMS but was later given to Arthur after the service ended during the beaching acts. At first, he was the only engine on the line until the work started getting too much for him, so Barry was sent to work on the line after being rescued by Bear from Barry's scrapyard. Nowadays, Nicholas, Owen, Evan and Edwin also work here. It then reaches Balladby, where it meets the trains from the main line that uses the bypass. Afterwards, it goes along the beach where the old pier rail and the church station where Mrs. Kindly's daughter wedding happened before arriving at the fishing village. The line then curves and arrives at Norrenby. Another track on the bypass goes to the transfer yards and the wharf where it meets up with the Scarlowy Railway. Well, that's all the branch lines covered, now onto the Scarlowy Railway. My map of the Scarlowy Railway is mostly based on how it is in the Railway series, but with some locations from Seasons 4 and 5, along with some locations from Season 6, 7 and the Hit era, plus the Blue Mountain Quarry and Austin Castle. The Scarlowy Railway begins at Croven's Gate. The Shed and Wharf are also here. It passes under a road bridge by the Fink Controller's house, near the bridge, climbs sharply before leveling out for the last mile to Crosby Current where Duncan came off the rails. Before Crosby Current, the line goes to a crossing located by Mr. Q's cottage. Just north of the station, the line swings over the road in a level crossing. Road and rail run side by side for two miles. This is where Sir Handel and George had their accident, until the road and rail swing west across the river, where road and rail divert. The road drips sharply and swings west. It then goes through the woodland valley where the picnic area is located, around the bend and reaching Glenock. The line swings north once more, past shattered cottages and farms. It was also where Scarlowy bounced the manager off the footplate into a bush. After crossing a girder bridge, the line goes past a castle and enters a tunnel. The line crosses a trestle bridge and meets up with the Great Waterton branch line of Bluebell Valley. The station is also here. After going through the tunnel, the line splits up and reaches the viaduct before reaching Reneus. When you get nearer to Reneus, there is also a Y that leads to both the station itself and the Blue Mountain Quarry. More on that in a bit. After Reneus, the line comes to Lakeside Junction, also named Quarry Siding, where the loop was opened. The loop line runs around and above the lake on a ledge cut in the hillside among the trees. There is one station, Lakeside, and a bridge. At Lakeside, there was also a track to the now closed Boulder Quarry along with the, the track to the stone cutting and transfer yard. Before Scarlowy Station, there is an old iron bridge where Proteus fell to his doom before reaching into Scarlowy. A shed and yards are also here alongside the track to the slate quarry which has since become an, an animations plant, although on a few times engines have been sent down here. Below the quarry is Echo Pass Ravine where Scarlowy got caught in an avalanche. 
Going back to the Y, if you take the west track, it goes over the old wooden bridge, across a hill, past the point to the old mine where, where Hill Farm is, before arriving at the junction to the Blue Mountain Quarry, before arriving at the quarry itself. Afterwards, there is a straight section of track to Orsted Castle, which crosses over the Peel Godred branch line, past Rumbling Bridge for the Marfway Light Rally, where there is some points for it, and arriving at Ulfstead Castle. After Cosney Curran, there is a track that goes to the wharf. It goes over a bridge, crosses the Northwestern Railway, around the curve, and into the transfer yard, before continuing west to the wharf, where Colin also works. Now on to the Caldy Fell Railway. My head cannon of the Caldy Fell Railway is like it is in the Railway series, although it has a fleet of four diesel engines. Alaric and Eric, as I said before, are now owned by the Vickerstown Railway Museum, which differs from what happened to their basis on the Snowdon Mountain Railway. The Coldyfell Railway begins at Kirk Macharan, past the engine shed, before climbing up the Peel Godred branch line, before arriving at Shiloh. Then, it runs along the wildlife sanctuary at Pol Night Curran, which is north of the line, goes over the Scarlery Road viaduct, then arrives at the station itself, it soon reaches Devil's Bank, which is where the original number one, Godrin, came off the tracks and fell down the mountain. After braving this part of the line, we finally reach Caldy Fell. We have two railways left, so let's cover the Arsdale Railway, or the original Mitsuda Railway. In this canon, the mid Railway is based on how it was in the Railway series. Due to this, Duke's Village, Old Station, Ells Farm and Valesbridge won't be on here as they don't exist on my mid Railway. The first stop for the Arsdale Railway is Arlesborough West, where the ballast chute is also here. It travels past the engine shed, continues alongside the Little Western before branching off east and arriving into Bridge Street. The next station is Fafcar Road. Goes past another mill which used to be owned by the mid Railway with the with the mines of Carsley Hound, which is also reopened for the for the Arsdale Railway, and pulls into Marthwaite. After that, it travels along the place where Bert got Teddy Boston wet, then under a bridge, and then into Arcel Green, rides along a road through another woodland, past the junction to the ballast mine, and the Peel Godred extension, and arrives into the last station for the main line, Arisdale. Also, like in Wild and Western series, the line was extended to Peel Godred. It goes over a gradient, past the original mid sheds. The line then starts to climb along the mountain road. It goes through a tunnel and arrives at Kasni Howen. Along the track to the mine, there is a cave nearby called The Pit. After that, it then goes to the second tunnel, where Falcon nearly fell to his death. Goes past where Olsted Road used to be, through King Ori's Bridge and terminate at Peel Godred. Well, that's the Arsdale Railway done, but it's not over yet. In this canon, the mines at Arsdale and Bertram's old mine are at the same location. As it suggests, Bertram used to work here, but when the mid Railway closed in 1947, Bertram was left here until it was rediscovered and reopened for tourists, and is now a part of the Marfway Light Railway, which started construction during the restoration of the Alstead section of Sodor Tramways. Little Barford, Fletcher, formerly known as Albert, Oh yeah, and also Albert Mark III and Matt Albert Mark II are the same character, believe it or not. Great Waterton and Sydney also work here. It starts at the first station, Rumbling Bridge, and after that is Strawberry Grove, before going around the curve and arrives at Middle Station, where after that, it starts to climb a hill before arriving at Mountain Village Station. At the hill, there is another junction, one goes to Bertram's old mine, and the other goes over a bridge, past a campsite, before reaching another hill, which descends into Elephant Park, the very last station on the line. Well, that 
wraps up the map, and I must say, I have wrote quite a lot for the script of this video. There have been a lot of edits to this map before the video, which I am thinking of adding more since I have. There are also a lot of locations from the TV series that aren't included as they don't exist in this canon. Any locations from the All Engines Go reboot don't count as it's a separate canon. But I can't name all of them, or else that would make the video more, more longer than it already is. But if you have made it this far, then I thank you for taking your time to see this video and have a great rest of your day. And this is your boy Mal, signing off, and peace out.